Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about MATLAB and how to use the software. So what we are going to cover in this lecture is I'm going to give you an introduction to MATLAB. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about data management. And then we are also going to talk about plotting and graphing with MATLAB. Note that throughout the, le the lecture, we are also going to look at some basic statistics. I have also prepared in-class exercises that will be conducted throughout the lecture. MATLAB is a programming language which you can use to do all types of numerical analysis, statistics, simulations, plotting and graphing, etc. Note that there is a significant amount of documentation from the MATLAB manufacturer. The name of the manufacturer is MathWorks. And usually, if you have a problem, a particular problem, and you would like to know how it is done with MATLAB, you can go on Google, for example, type in the particular topic, use MATLAB as one of the keywords, and that usually gives you very quickly the desired help. So, for example, if you're interested about uh, histograms, then you can type in histograms and MATLAB in Google, and you will find the appropriate web page. There is also a lot of online resources associated with the manufacturer. So, for example, <clears throat> if you go to uh, to the web page indicated, then you have the documentation for MATLAB, and you have various topics like basic uh, basic tutorial, how to use data, how to import data into MATLAB, and note that we are going to talk about this today how to do analysis and uh, graphs, math, etc. Okay. So note that there is also a textbook that could be potentially useful. You have access through the textbook uh, through the library, and it is called Applied Statistics using SPSS, Statistica, MATLAB, and R. And uh, you can also have two additional books that are called Math Statistics in MATLAB, a primer, and Computational Statistics Handbook with MATLAB. So those two books at the bottom here, those are references and uh, that you can purchase on any uh, large online uh, online retailer. Okay. But again, note that those books are only supplemental and you find a lot of information online. And you also have a large community of MATLAB users that could help you answer questions that you may have uh, with regard to the software. Okay, so now let us actually start using uh, MATLAB. So when you first open MATLAB, what you have, you have basically two windows. You have a command window here on the left-hand side, and you have a workspace on the right-hand side. In the workspace, you are going to store all the variables, or you're going to have a list of all the variables. And in the command window on the left-hand side, this is where you can use MATLAB interactively. Note that using MATLAB interactively, you should only do uh, very for quick calculations, and you should not use it on a regular basis. What you should be using on a regular basis is the editor. To open the editor, uh, this, you have to click on New Script. And so now you see that the command window has moved to the bottom. And up here, you now have the editor. And you can write in your script or your MATLAB script. So note that any MATLAB script is going to end on, uh, has the file extension uh, .m. Now, what the script is, is basically the following. You are typing things what you want MATLAB to do, and MATLAB does not execute those, uh, those uh, functions or those commands immediately, but waits until you run them. The advantage is that you can correct the, uh, the, the functions and the commands that you are typing in, And it also allows you to run everything uh, simultaneously. And 
throughout this lecture and also throughout the class, it will become uh, more clear of why this is uh, really, really convenient. Okay. So, um, just on a side note, you should also know that uh, there is a base version of MATLAB that contains most of the functionality, but there are also toolboxes like, for example, the statistics and machine learning toolbox that allow you to do uh, more specific calculations and expand the possibilities of MATLAB significantly. Okay. Usually you can purchase MATLAB, the base version, and then you can also purchase uh, additional toolboxes. Uh, if you want to have a list of all the toolboxes that are out there, then you have the link in your slides and you can see, for example, that you have, uh, I don't know, a database toolbox or a bioinformatics toolbox or uh, an, an antenna toolbox. And then it also tells you what the uh, description or what the toolboxes, uh, what the toolboxes do. Okay. But now let us go back to, let us go back to, to MATLAB. So first of all, let us start writing our first script. And it is always a good idea to start off with basically a header of what the script is doing, perhaps the date and also the author. Now, what we will see is that when you execute a script, then MATLAB is going to read each line and execute what is on that line. If you want to avoid that MATLAB executes a particular line, you have to use the percentage sign. Okay. And again, it will become clear of how this works uh, soon. So let us start with the percentage sign and say, let's call it uh, title. And let's say that title is uh, my first MATLAB session. Okay. And then you can also have the date and say the date could be a uh, today's date or whatever the day is. And then you could also have the author name. And that could be my name. Okay. So this would be <clears throat> kind of the header of the uh, editor. Now, again, it is always a good idea that as soon as you type, start typing a uh, script, that you are saving it. And let's call it my first script. Okay. So just in case something happens, that you always have the information uh, safe. Now note that you can use MATLAB as a simple calculator. So for example, you let us go down for the moment uh, to the command window here. For example, if you want to know what is three plus five, then you can simply type in three plus five. You can hit enter and you get the answer, which is eight. Note, a very convenient feature of MATLAB is that it stores the last output or the last answer in the workspace. So in this case, we calculated three plus five. The output of that is eight, or the answer of that is eight, which is displayed in the command window, but it is also displayed here. And note that this answer, this last value, always changes depending, depending on what you're doing. So if you want to know what is 7 plus 10, that is going to be 17, and it will store the new value of 17 in the, in the uh, answer variable. Now, when we are going back to the script, it is always good practice to actually clear the memory and also clear the command window. So our first command that we're going to use is called clear. And the command clear is going to clear all the variables that are in the workspace. Okay. And so the second 
command that we are going to use is to clear all the items that are in the command window that we are basically starting from scratch. And the command for that is called CLC. Now note what you are going to see throughout the lecture and also in the lecture notes is the use of the semicolon at the end of a command line. Okay? So in the lecture notes, I have a semicolon here and also a semicolon here. Basically, what this means is that MATLAB suppresses the output in the command window. It executes the calculation, but it doesn't display the result in the command window. So if we are going back to the previous example, for example, if we are calculating 8 plus 10, but we put a semicolon at the end, then MATLAB is not going to display the answer of 18, and the answer of 18 is only displayed here. The semicolon basically avoids cluttering the command window. So when we are so if we want to execute a particular line, and we are going to do this very often throughout the uh, lecture, then you can highlight a line, you can right click with your mouse on it, and you can say evaluate selection. Alternatively, you can also press F9. And what it does is it clears all the variables which are in the workspace. If you are doing the same for CLC, what you will see is that all the um, command window, all the items in the command window are going to be cleared. So very soon we are going to work with data sets that I have uploaded um, for your disposal. <clears throat> and, and usually you should put those data sets into the same folder than the script file. So in this case, I have the script file in this folder that I call MATLAB. And you can look at uh, the current folder or you can click on the current folder and you see all the files that are in this, uh, in this folder. So here we have my first script. This is the script that we are currently working with. And we also have uh, four data sets. Now note that Three of the data sets are comma separated value files, and one data set is actually an Excel file. Okay. So, what we have at the core of MATLAB are functions. Those functions, they do things for you. Okay. And we are going to use a lot of functions in this, uh, in this lecture. And you're also going to use a lot of functions for your assignments and the exam. So basically, you take a function and you have your data. Let's call this data x. And you feed in your data into the function, probably followed by some arguments. And then you're going to get a result in return. Now, the result in return, I call this object, yeah, which is basically the output of the function. We have the function name, okay, which is the name of the system function. And note that there is a lot of documentation about those functions uh, on the MathWorks uh, webpage. Note that you can also create your own functions, but more about this later. Then the X is your data. And then you have, uh, you can feed into the function also various arguments, okay. Arguments are specific parameters that are associated with the function, okay? Now, note that if a function is executed without a specific assignment, which means that you are simply, in MATLAB, you're simply typing in function name and then the input and the arguments, that the function output is not stored as an object. Storing it as an object means that it appears in the workspace. So for example, if I say five plus eight, and I 
execute this, then we are getting the answer of 13. Or I can say my first object is equal to 5 plus 8. And then here I assign 5 plus 8 and I assign the name of the result to my, as my first object. When I execute this, I have my first object with the value of 13. Okay. Note that before I said that you can highlight a particular selection and then evaluate it, you can also use the command, uh, or you can also uh, click on the function run and it simply executes the entire function as well, or the entire script as well. But let us get back to the let, let us get back to the slides here. Okay. So it is always useful, or it's actually also very so very important that before you are reading a function, before you are using a function, read documentation associated with the function. Because many functions they have default settings, and you should be aware of those default settings. Okay. In most cases, those uh, default values are basically uh, values that satisfy the most use, the most users. So, for example, if you consider the help file associated with the function histogram, okay, then I have opened the file here. And then you will see that you can either use histogram and you simply input your data. Or you can import histogram and your data as well as the number of bins. And note that in the documentation, MathWorks write that the histogram function uses an automatic binning algorithm that returns bins with a uniform width. Okay. Now, if you're not happy with the look of the histogram as chosen by MATLAB, you can also use the parameters n bins, which lets you determine of how many bins MATLAB should use. So basically you are overriding the default values or the default number of bins when you are using this option n bins here. Okay. So it is always important to be aware of those uh, default values. So note that there are some main data types that you're that you can use in MATLAB. Okay? You have vectors, matrices, data frames. Actually, data frames in MATLAB are called uh, are called tables. Okay, and note that those data frames are very sim similar to Excel sheets. Okay, or to a particular sheet in Excel. Now, let us go through those. Uh, let us go through some of those uh, those uh, data types. Okay, so before I continue, let me delete the examples here. Okay. And now note that um, before we continue, I would like to introduce what are called sections. Basically, sections help you to subdivide your code and to only execute or run a particular section of your code. To start a new section, it's very simple. All you have to do is you have to do the double percentage sign. Okay, instead of the single percentage sign. And now you see that there is a line and that there is also um, uh, a yellow space. Basically, or the yellow shade determines in which section you currently are. Okay. And so uh, the use of this will become uh, clear in a, in a few minutes. Now, let us do our first example. Suppose that you are interested in the years the presidential elections took place. So what you can do is you can type, for example, presidential or presidential election. You can save this to equal. And basically what you want to do is you want to create a sequence that you know the presidential election in 1788 all the way to 2020. So to create that sequence in steps of five in steps of four years, what you can write is 1788. 
colon four colon 2020. What this does is MATLAB is going to start at 1788 and is going to display or uh, is going to store numbers that are in increment of four all the way until 2020. Okay, so let us execute this line. You can say evaluate selection. And then what you have here is a list of all the years the regular presidential election sh uh, should take place. Okay. Note that you also have the presidential elections. If you double click on the, uh, if you double click on presidential elections, then you also have all the years uh, stored in the uh, in the variable presidential election. Okay. Now suppose that you only want to execute the presidential election and not the clearing the memory, then this is where the sections come into place, play. So if you click on run, then MATLAB is going to execute clear. It's going to clear the memory. It is going to clear the work command window and it is going to get to create this new uh, object called presidential election. Let us put a semicolon back here. Note that if you have a warning sign like this, it says, it tells you why there is a warning sign. So in this case, we have, um, we have the, the warning sign that says terminate statement with a semicolon to suppress output. Okay. So if we put the semicolon here, now note this warning sign is only a suggestion. But if we put this semicolon here, then the message goes away. Now, if we just want to execute this section here, then what you have to do is you can run section. Okay, so let us look at the difference. So we can run the entire script and all we get is the presidential election. Or we can create, say, a new sequence of numbers, say, um, say uh, let's call it just years, and let's say all the years from uh, 1990 to 2000. Then if we simply run this, this section here, then it is not going to clear the presidential election, okay? but it is only executing presidential election and the years, okay? So this is, uh, this is going to be very, very helpful. So let us create a new section. And in this new section, we are going to do, create our first uh, table, okay? And let's call this new section students, okay? This is simply a note to know of what is going on in the next section. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to enter heights of people, of students, and storing them in a vector, which we call height. So to create a vector, you type in height, and then you say height equals, and then to enter values into MATLAB, you have to use the squared brackets. And let us now enter the height of 10 students uh, into this uh, into this vector height and assume the students have the following height. And then we finish this again with a squared bracket and a semicolon. And note that let us run the section that clears the memory here. And then we are only going to, we are not interested in the years of the presidential election anymore, or the years. We are only interested in students. Then we can just click on run section. And it is storing the height of those students here. If you want to know how this looks like in the command window, you can also say height hit enter, and then you have the height of the students.
Note that MATLAB has put those heights in a, in a row. If you want to have a column, there are two ways of doing this. You can either say height, then, and then you just type in height again, and you're putting the apostrophe at the end of height. And then what MATLAB does, it, it transposes the object height. So if you're running the section again, then you now have, you type in height, and now you have a column instead of a row, okay? Also note that you could have entered, you could have entered the height, let's call this um, height two, you could have entered those heights with semicolons. And let me just copy this vector here. And instead of having a empty space, a space in between, you can put a semicolons behind each number. And then what MATLAB would have done is storing it as a column in the first place. So if we call this height two, then you see that MATLAB would have stored it or stores it immediately as a column. Okay, so there are multiple ways of doing it. Note that later on, if you want to put this data height into a data uh, into a table, then we prefer the height as a we prefer to have the data in a in a column. Now let us do some manipulations with height to show you the functionality or to show you the basic functionality of uh, MATLAB. So for example, for some reason you want to know the sum of all the height, you can type in sum height. And then when you when you execute this line, it tells you that the sum of all those values is 723. If you want to know what is the natural logarithm of all those values, then you can type in log height. You can execute this line and it displays you the natural logarithm of the vector height. Okay. Now, what would be more interesting okay, is if you are interested in the average height of students. Okay, and let's call this uh, mean height. So we are going to create this new object uh, mean height and the function associated with the mean is, well, it is called mean. So you can say mean height. Let us use a semicolon here. We can execute or we can evaluate this selection. And what we see is that the mean height is 72.3 inches. Okay. Now, what I would like to illustrate here uh, with uh, MATLAB is also the use of a dot. Okay. So MATLAB originally has been designed to do matrix algebra. And so it interprets multiplication and division as operations on, uh, on a matrix, okay? So for example, if you wanted to do the height, if you wanted to know what the height squared is, let me put this down here in the uh, command window. Say height, squared, okay, then you're going to get an error associated with, uh, with uh, MATLAB, okay, because there is the incorrect dimension for raising a matrix to a power. Because what you want is, in reality, what we want is 
we want to have, we want to know what is 71 squared, 77 squared, 70 squared, and so on. So to do this, you have to use the dot. So let's call it height squared. And then you do not type in height squared, but before the, uh, before the actual symbol, you have to put a dot. So now in this case, what MATLAB does is it squares element-wise each term in the vector height. So now you have here the output of 71 squared is 5,041, 77 squared is 5,929, and so on. So that few additional functionalities with MATLAB that I just want to uh, show you right now. So if you are highlighting a variable, or if you are double clicking on a variable or clicking on a variable, it shows where that variable is used uh, in your script. Okay. Second, if you are using the, so if you are using the, uh, the command window and you are using the up and down arrows, it shows you the previous functions or it shows your history of what you have typed in. And it also shows you with the, with the red uh, symbol here that this uh, has resulted in an error message. Mm -hmm. So this may be useful if you, uh, if you somehow mistyped um, or misspelled something. Okay, so now we have the uh, height, we have the height in here, and we do not need the other variables. So let us clear some of the variables. Now, before we have, we have used the command clear. Now the command clear um, deletes the entire uh, workspace. So if you want to selectively uh, clear a variable, what you can do is you can type in uh, clear, then height two, and say height squared, and say mean height. And then when you evaluate the selection, it clears those three variables. Okay, so you see that they are now that they are now gone. Okay, so we are only left with the height of the we are only left with the height of the students. Now let us create some student IDs, and let's call this student ID is equal to one through ten. Note that if you're thinking back about the presidential election, the semicolon has created a sequence. So in this case, we specified the uh, beginning value, the increment, the ending value. If you are specifying the beginning value and simply the ending value, it assumes an increment of one. Now note that I have put parentheses around here because I want to put a apostrophe at the end because I want MATLAB to store the student ID as a column and not as a row. So if I execute this or if I evaluate this, I now have the student ID. Note that I also have the height of students as well. So we have 10 students. We have created so far the student ID and we have the height of the students. Now let us assign names to those students. Okay. And let us call the object student names. And to create student names, we are going to use the uh, we are going to use the squared bracket again, and let us type in some names for those uh, students. Okay. So the first student is named Andrew, and then we are going to put the uh, semicolon here to ensure that MATLAB stores the names in a column. So we have Andrew, we have uh, Linda, we have. Uh, William, we 
Daniel Gina and so on. Now note that the problem you run here is that, and this is not a problem, theoretically you could continue on the same line with the names, but in order to make it uh, more compact, you want to start on a new line. Or more specifically, you want to continue uh, on, a new, on a new line. So to do so, what you have to do is you have to enter three dots in MATLAB. So when you type in dot, three dots, you see that Sony is, um, is in uh, green. And then you can hit enter and it starts on a, it starts on a new line. Okay. So this is very uh, useful if you have a very long command and you just uh, do not want to, to go from left to right uh, with, the, with the mouse to get it all on the screen. So now here we have now our uh, 10 student names. Okay. And so now when we say evaluate, we get this error message. Why? Because we have a comma here and we do not have a semicolon. So if you replace this with a, a semicolon and we evaluate this again, then we are now having the student names here. Note that it indicates that this is a string variable. String means it's character based. Okay. So if you want to see the result, you can say student names. And note that you have now the, uh, the names of the 10 students. Now let us create a table with the students that has the student ID, the student names, and the height of the student. Okay. And let us, uh, use the, let us use the, um, the table name students. Okay. And we say students is equal to, and then we have to use the command table. And the input is going to be the student ID, the student names. And also the height. So when we evaluate this, we have now a new table, which is called a table. We can double click on this. Now let us see if we can make this a little bit uh, bigger here. And I think you can go on uh, preferences. Then you have fonts. Let's see. Uh, okay, there we go. So now we have this a little bit uh, bigger uh, for you to see. Okay. So we have the, this is very similar thing about the uh, Excel sheet where you have the student names. And the student IDs, the student names, and the height of the students. So to practice what we have just learned to create a, a table with the three, uh, with the ten students and the three columns, you now have uh, you now have an in-class exercise where you have to create this table where you have three columns called name economics and English, and those are the score of the of five students. And the name of those five students are uh, is uh, Mindy, Greg, Shubra, Keith, and Louisa. Okay. So create this table in MATLAB. And then once you have created the data frame, also remove the unused vectors. Those unused vectors should be name, economics, and English. You do not need those vectors anymore since you now have the table. So if you have implemented this in MATLAB, 
what you should have is a new table called uh, student scores. So if you double click on this, you have the student names, you have the scores they have in economics, and you have the scores they have in English. Okay? So the next topic that we are going to talk about is how to identify certain elements in this, in this table. And we are going to talk about this uh, in terms of uh, what is called indexing. So in MATLAB, if you want to refer to a particular value, so let's take the student scores and suppose that you want to identify the 95 here, okay? Then there are several, several ways of uh, doing so. So you can type in student scores and then parentheses open and note that the first term is going to be the row and the second term is the column. So if you're typing in three, two, that is the third row, the second column. Referring to the table, the third row and the second column is the 95. So when you evaluate this, you get that the term is 95. Now, if you want to include, or if you want to extract all the terms, all the grades that Shupra had, then you want to use the entire row, or you want to have the entire row returned. And to do so, you can type in student scores. Again, you want the third row, but in order to get the entire, in the entire row or all columns in that row, you just use the term colon, or colon. That will return the entire row. So here you have Chuba, who has received a 95 in economics and a 77.5 in English. Okay. Now, suppose that you just want to have the columns student names and economics, but, or student names and English, but you do not want to have the column economics. You can do this by typing in student scores, parentheses open. You want all, uh, all rows, so you want all students, but you only want English and student names. Then in a table to refer to the names of a particular column or to a group of uh, columns, you have to use the curly brackets. So you curly bracket open, and then you write in English and student names, curly bracket closed, and then also the round bracket closed. So when you evaluate this, you now have a table, which is English and the student names. Note that the sequence that it's first English and then student names is based is based because we have English and student names uh, student names here okay now suppose that you want all the students who have received a score of more than 70 from in English then you can also do the following you can say student scores and then, because you want all the English scores that are bigger than uh, 70, you can type in say student scores English. Okay, so now here we have learned now a new, a new function and that is the dot, right? Okay? So when you're looking at student scores, student scores, think about this as the sheet, and then the columns are named student names, economics and English. So in, in MATLAB, so in MATLAB, you can actually refer to a particular column by 
typing in this uh, the sheet name dot and then the column name. So we want all the scores that are bigger than 70. And note that we want uh, all columns selected. Okay. So this we So now we have the student names of all people that have scores in English above 70. And those two uh, people are Shubra and Luisa. Okay. Now, what may be helpful in this uh, student scores sheet is to add a fourth column that has the average of economics and English. So to create a new column, you can type in student scores. So that is the sheet. And then you simply type in the name of the new column. Let's call it average. And what you want is the average of economics and English. Okay. So you want the mean. And note that you want the mean of the second column, second and third column, okay, for all students. So you want the mean of student scores. And now let us refer to you want all students, okay, so you want all the all the rows. And you want the second and the third column. So here, the student two, three refers to the second and the third column. Note that you have to use the curly brackets every time you're working with a table and you want to refer to columns. Now, with the mean, note that the mean in general takes the average column wise. So if you just type in the mean of say economics or the mean, I'll say if you type in the mean for this area, for this, uh, for those cells here, what it would give you is the mean of economics and the mean of English. But this is not what we want. We want the mean, the average from economics and English per student. So that is why the column mean, why the function mean has an argument that refers to the dimension. The dimension one is that you take the average of a column. The dimension two, as indicated here, is you take the average of uh, row wise. So when you run this, you now have a new table. And that new table has a fourth column with the average of the students. Now, very often, or actually most of the time, you are not uh, you are not um, importing or typing in a column or a table by hand, but you are importing it from a file that you have. So next, what we are going to do is we have the uh, we have the data set vehicles, okay, and the data set vehicles is basically data on the fuel efficiency for all model years from 1984 to 2020. You can download the data from the, uh, from the webpage fueleconomy.gov, which is maintained by the Department of Energy as well as the Environmental Protection Agency. And you also have documentation about the, uh, what the individual variables mean uh, in, this, in this link here. Okay. Now, in order to actually read uh, or to import a file into MATLAB, this is uh, very easy. You have to use the command uh, read table. Okay. And this uh, read table, you can use also, read table, you can use also for a CSV files, so comma separated value files, as well as Excel files. So in this case, we want the, let's call it uh, vehicles. And the name of the CSV file is vehicles.csv. And actually, let us put this in a new section. So 
So when you read this, and here you should put a semicolon at the end because otherwise this is a very large table and it will put a lot of it would put a lot of information into your command window. So if you're just running this section, you now have this table called vehicles. Note that you have 41,013 uh, vehicles and 83 variables. So when you look at the table, so basically what this information is and much more, think about if you're purchasing a new car and you go to the dealership and you have information on the side of the, on the side of the car, like an EPA label that tells you about the fuel efficiency, the cost of fuel, the environmental performance, etc. Now, those labels are constructed with, with the elements, uh, with the elements in this, um, in this file here. Okay. So, for example, you see that you have, um, you have, uh, the make, make, of the car, you have the model of the car, and it also tells you uh, various information about, for example, the type of transmission. If it's a manual, if it's an automatic, how many um, how many gears it has, etc. Okay. Now, one of the information in the uh, file is what type of car category are we talking about? So now this is now note the following um, the following operations that we are going to do with this uh, vehicles data set would be actually uh, relatively difficult or relatively burdensome uh, to do in Excel. Okay, so this is where you start seeing really the uh, the reason why we are going to use uh, where we are going to use a software different than Excel in this uh, in this class. So the Variable of interest right now is called V class. Okay. V class is, uh, is a variable name in the, uh, in the vehicle startup file. And I think it is, uh, here, 60, 63, that basically says what type of car is it? Is it a two seater? Is it a subcompact car? Is it a van? Etc. Suppose that you are interested in, well, how many, how many vehicle classes, how many different vehicle classes actually are there in this, in this, um, in this file or in this column? To find this out, you can use the command unique. You can type in uh, unique and you need to specify the column. So here it is the sheet, right? The sheet vehicles and the column V class. And let's call this um, uh, vehicle classes. And so when you evaluate this, then you're getting a new uh, you're getting a new object here, which is called vehicle classes. So when you open this, what you can see is that in this file or in this sheet vehicles that has 41,000 car, there are 34 different vehicle classes. And we have now this list of uh, vehicle classes in this, uh, in this new object called vehicle classes. So you have vans, for example, you have uh, passenger vans, cargo, cargo type, passenger type, okay? Note that this data has been, um, is from 1985, I think, all the way 1984 to 2020. So I assume that there has been some revision of, um, there has been some revision about the car classes over time. Okay. So now let us work only with cars that are uh, in the year, to, from the year 2005. Let's call this cars. 2015, and let us just use the vehicles that are in 2015. And in particular, we are only interested in uh, GHG score and the vehicle class. Okay, so this is the only the only two columns that we are interested in. So you can type in um, the cars, and we create a new uh, 
object called cars 2015. So you type in uh, vehicles. Okay. And then you uh, go with a parenthesis open and you want all the vehicles that are in the year uh, 2015. And here to select a particular year, you have to type in a double equal sign. Double equal sign forces MATLAB and by the way, also many other statistical software packages to conduct a logical test. So vehicles.year, the double equal sign, and we are only looking at 2015. Note, that the vehicles dot year equals 2015, that I put this before the comma, okay? Because in this files vehicles, I am only interested in the rows where the value in year is 2015. And the columns that I'm interested in are the GHG score, and the vehicle class. Okay. So when I evaluate this, now I have a new object called cars, and it only has two columns. It has the GHG score, and it has the vehicle class. Note that those are different vehicles, okay? So basically, if you're thinking about, it means that in 2015, there were 1,278 different models on the, on the market. Now that you have the object with all the GHG scores and the vehicle classes, suppose now that you are only interested in um, the car types, compact cars and large cars. Okay. So in order to extract that data, what you can do is you can first create a new object that is called types. Okay. And in that object, we have the two car classes, compact cars and large cars. And then you can put types. And then you can use the function is member. So what the function is member is doing is it compares two inputs, A and Bs, and returns the, uh, the elements of A that are in B. So in this case, we are interested in the cars 2015 in the uh, vehicle class. And we want to compare the column that now has 1,278 cars. We just want to know, okay, which of those rows actually include the types that we are interested in. So let us evaluate this and then look at the results. Actually evaluate both. So when we are now looking at types, then we have what is called a logical vector. So let us first look at cars 2015. So we are interested in compact cars and we are interested in large cars. So we see that in the object cars 2015, the second car is a compact car that we are interested in. The sixth car is a compact, uh, is a large car that we are interested in. The seventh car is a large car that we are interested in, and so on. So with the command is member, what we now have is a logical, and we see that we have ones everywhere where we have either a compact car or a large car. So we have for the second car, remember this is a compact car, 
6 and 7 are large cars and so on. So then when we want to extract only the data from cars 2015, which are large and uh, compact cars, then we can say cars 2015. And remember that we can, if we type in the types here, this is a column of, this is a column, um, this is a vector of zero and one. It will only return the values where they are, we have, where we have a one. So it's types. And then again, we just want the uh, uh, GHG score, but note that we uh, have that already. So we can just put the, uh, put the colon here. And then when we execute this, now we have 321 cars, and those are the GHG scores of all the cars that are either a compact car or a large car. Okay. So now to practice this, um, let us just focus on 2014, the model year 2014, and let us focus on the uh, three car manufacturers, Toyota, Ford, and Audi. And what I want you to do is I want you to extract the information in the columns GHG score, make, and vehicle class. Now, let us then return to MATLAB and let us continue to work on the uh, CARS 2015 dataset. So we have extracted the GHG score and the vehicle class. And suppose that we are interested in the average GHG score by vehicle class. To do those calculations, what we can do is we can type in the following. We can say, uh, let's to call it cars 2015 table. And then we have to use the function uh, GRP stats, group stats. And the group, star, group stats is on uh, the object cars 2015. We are interested in the, the grouping that we are interested in is um, vehicle class. And then we are interested in the mean. Okay. So now when we execute this or evaluate this. Now what we have is the following. We have the compact cars. There are 207 in the data file for 2015. And the mean GHG score is 6.35. And for large cars, the mean GHG score is 5.1754. So this is how you would be using the function uh, group stats. Okay. So now let us look at uh, some additional functions that uh, could come in handy. Now for the next, we are going to look at the general social survey. And note that the general social survey is a survey which is done every year to uh, determine trends in social issues in the United States. So, for example, of uh, how many people, um, how many people are participating in voting, what their stance is on, say, abortion, on uh, gay marriage, uh, if they are happy with life, if they are in a healthy condition, if they own a gun, etc. So, in this particular, uh, for this particular example, we are going to use the um, the table called GUN GSS 2012. So let us just load the table. Let's call it uh, GSS 2012. And we can do this with a read table. And the table is actually called GUN GSS 2012.csv. And the table contains the respondents for 2012. And it contains the uh, the age of the respondent, whether they own a gun, 
and whether they are male or female. So let us look at well, how many people actually own a gun in this uh, survey. So we can say tabulate GSS 2012 dot own gun. And actually let us also do how many of them are female, how many are female, GSS 2012 dot uh, uh, sex. Then what we can see is that in the, in the survey, we have 65.4% of people do not own a firearm, no. 34.6% 34, 34 do own a firearm. And then we also have 55 females, 55% 55 of females and 44% of females of all the people in this, uh, in this data set. Now, what would be more interesting is actually to have, to have a diff to differentiate between female gun owners, female non-gun owners, male gun owners, and male non-gun owners. To do this quickly in uh, MATLAB, what you can type in is uh, crosstab, and then you can say GSS, uh, GSS 2012 own gun, comma, GSS 2012 sex and now you have here you have the count variables okay so now how do we interpret them so note that we have used the gun ownership first and then we have used the gender second. So for the gun ownership, we have them under, um, we have to read this as um, um, vertically, in the sense that you have, here you have the gun owners, and here you have the non-gun owners, okay? And note that because it's no and yes, so you have, no gun owners and gun owners. Then the columns represent the sex or the gender, where you have female and males. So here you have the uh, females, those two values are the females and those two values are the males. So what this means is that here you have a female that does not own a gun. What this means is that 495 people do not own a gun and are female. 334 people do not own a gun and are male. And uh, 207 are, the, so those two values are those who own a gun. 207 of them are female and 231 of them are male. Okay, so this is how you could use the function cross tab to actually compute those uh, values easily. Okay. So the last thing that I would like to do in terms of uh, data management is to use or to show you an extremely useful function which is called uh, join. Okay. So I use this uh, this type of function uh, very often in my own research. And the data set that we are going to use are uh, Ohio schools. Okay. And let me just show you the data set first. So this is the data set, which is called uh, MATLAB lecture dot, uh, in the Excel file. And we have two sheets in this Excel file. We have information about the income and we have information about the score. Here we have IRN, which is basically an identifier for the school district. Okay, a, a code for the school district. We have the um, we have the enrollment of the school district, 
and we also have the median income of the school district. Okay. Now in the second sheet, we have the again we have the identifier of the school district, the code, the IRN, but we also have a test score of how well students are actually performing on tests in the school district. Okay. Now what we would like to do is we would like to merge those two data sets that we get a new data set where we have IRN, enrollment, median income, and the Ohio score. Okay. So sometimes this may not, uh, there may not be, uh, a, it may not be possible to simply copy and paste, or it may be very burdensome to actually uh, match to make sure that the, what you have in the column IRN actually matches the, what you have in the other column IRN from the other sheet. Now, what you can do is you can use MATLAB to do a join. So in the first step, we have to load the income and the score data and note that this is a, uh, that this is a, is an Excel file. But we can still use the uh, we can still use the function read table for this. So we have to do uh, it's called uh, MATLAB lecture dot xlsx. But now here we have to specify some additional parameters. And here we have the argument we are looking for the sheet. And the name of that sheet is Ohio Income. And the second sheet is called Ohio Score. And we call this uh, Ohio score. So when we evaluate this, we now have two new sheets. We have the Ohio income and we have the Ohio score. Okay. Now note that there is one school district that is in one but not the other. But let's do not worry about this particular school district. Let us just create a new object which is called Ohio. And here we are going to use join. Now, what is very important is that in order to use this function join, you have to make sure that you want to join those two, you want to join the Ohio score and the Ohio income. And they both need to have the same name of their the same variable name for the field which you would like to base your join on. So here we want to join those two sheets based on the IRN. And note that you have IRN in, uh, in Ohio score and you have IRN in income. So when you now do the join, You create a. Okay, so now here you see that we get a error message. This is because we have, I said before that we have one school district that is in one but not the other. So we can simply switch those uh, tables. Now we have this new table, Ohio score, uh, Ohio, where we have the school district code the enrollment, the median income, and the score associated with the school district, okay? So this is a very useful and valuable uh, function. Okay, so now the last topic that we are going to talk about today is uh, plotting and graphing in MATLAB. Okay. And now for this, we are going to use first, first of all, a data set that is called Faithful. And the data set is actually associated with uh, the software R. And it has uh, 
a little bit over 270 observations about the eruption times and waiting times between eruptions of uh, Old Faithful, uh, of the Geyser Old Faithful. So in our first step, let us load the data, which is called, uh, which is in faithful.csv. So you have the faithful, you have the eruption time in seconds, and you have the waiting between eruptions in minutes. Now let us first look at a histogram of the eruption times and the waiting times. So note that this is using the function that we have seen uh, right at the beginning, the function histogram, and we are interested in uh, the faithful. Uh, eruptions and when we run this we get our first plot in MATLAB. Okay. So note what you can see is you have the eruption times in seconds of Old Faithful and you actually see is that the eruptions are either short or they are longer. Okay, so where is later see uh, in this course that um, you have actually what is called a bimodal distribution. Okay, now we can also use see uh, about the waiting times. Here we are just typing in waiting. And then we see that for the uh, waiting times, we have a similar picture. Either you are waiting around 50 minutes or you or you are waiting around 80 minutes. Okay, which is actually a very interesting, uh, very interesting observations. Observation. Now, one of the things that I like about uh, MATLAB and software other than Excel is that you can actually put plots side by side, easily side by side. So for example, we can say subplot, and this is done via the function subplot. So a subplot is basically you say uh, how many rows, how many columns, and you're looking at your first plot. And that first plot is going to be the eruptions of the Geyser Old Faithful. Note this indent here, I just do for uh, visual purposes that it's easier to identify. And note that you can also say, you can also indicate among other things, you can specify a title. So in this case, we just say eruption. Or eruption time. And then we have to specify the second subplot. Note that here, this is the um, number of rows, the number of columns, and this is the number of the plot. So here we have the first plot, then we have the second plot, and here we have the waiting times, and here we are looking at waiting. So when you execute this, what you now get is two histograms side by side. Okay? And uh, on one side you have the eruption time, and, and on the other side you have the waiting time. And note that you can, of course, also save the plot. You can say save as. Let's do this as a, a PDF plot. Call this uh, faithful. And then now you have uh, saved this as a plot. Now note. When you look at the result of the plot, you realize that the pages is completely off. So what you can do instead to solve this is you can say uh, print preview. And here you can say, for example, you want the landscape. And 
and you can say use manual position, fill the best fit, and then you can now save this as um, you can now save this as a as a PDF and import it into other documents. Okay. So this concludes the section about uh, an introduction to MATLAB. So uh, please let me know uh, if you have more questions. Note that throughout this, uh, this course, you're going to learn more about the functionality of MATLAB uh, sprinkled throughout the different lectures.